Let's assume that we are just about to install a 10.2 kilowatt peak solar array. We might think that it would make sense to also install a 10 kilowatt solar inverter to match the size of our panel array. But the question is, should we consider oversizing our panel array relative to our total inverter capacity? In other words, why not installing a 12 kilowatt peak panel array or even a 15 kilowatt peak panel array? And what would be the benefits of doing so? Well, stay tuned because this is precisely the topic of today's video. And I will explain why the answer depends on the type of solar system you are considering. Hi everyone, thanks for stopping by. My name is Philippe and welcome to Electric Living. You may recall in my last video, we compared the two main solar technologies that are available, DC optimizers and micro inverters. Let's take a look at the string inverter plus DC optimizer solution that we talked about in my last video. Starting from the left hand side, we see the roof mounted solar panels plus the DC optimizers and we have one DC optimizers underneath each panel. These panels produce DC or direct current electricity, and that electricity is sent to an inverter, a central inverter, that is typically located on the ground, maybe outside the home or sometimes in the garage. And the role of the inverter is to convert that DC electricity into alternating current or AC electricity. That AC electricity is then sent to an electrical panel in the home and from there this AC electricity is distributed throughout the home to power various loads, could be lights, appliances and so on and so forth. Now if we produce more AC electricity than we need then this excess AC electricity is sent to the grid. But if, on the other hand, we don't produce enough AC electricity to cover our needs, then we would instead take AC electricity from the grid to provide for the whole. We also looked at the micro-inverter configuration in our last video. On, on the left, we have the solar panels mounted on the roof and underneath each panel we have a micro inverter and that micro inverter will convert the direct current or DC electricity coming from the panels into AC alternating current or AC electricity. That AC electricity, much like we saw earlier, is sent to the home electrical panel and then from there, that AC electricity is distributed across the home to power various appliances or lights and so on and so forth. Similarly, if we produce more AC than we need, then that ex excess AC electricity is sent to the grid. If we don't, then we would otherwise take AC electricity from the grid. It is worth mentioning here that in the case of micro-inverter configuration, the only option that we have when it comes to battery storage is AC coupled batteries. In the case of a DC optimizer configuration, we do have the choice. We could either go with an AC coupled battery storage or most likely a DC coupled battery storage. The advantage of a DC coupled battery is that the battery can be charged directly from the DC electricity that is produced from the panels. And that means that when we discharge the battery, there will be only one conversion from DC to AC electricity. A totally different situation when it comes to AC coupled batteries. And this presents quite a disadvantage as we talked about also last time. 
the DC electricity that is produced by the panel has to be converted into AC electricity. And in order to charge the battery, that AC electricity is converted back to DC electricity. And then later on, when we want to discharge the battery, that DC electricity is converted again for the third time, this time into AC electricity. So this is known as the uh, triple conversion loss penalty. Let's go back to our initial plan of installing a 10.2 kilowatt peak solar system. This would be 24 solar panels. Each panel would be 425 watts. And let's also assume that we have settled on installing a 10 kilowatt solar inverter. In the case of a DC optimizer solution, we would have 24 panels and 24 DC optimizers, one per panel. And in the case of a micro inverter configuration, we would have 24 panels and 24 micro inverters, one micro inverter per panel. Now, let's take a look at what the solar production would look like for either of these two systems during a nice bright sunny day. What we see on this chart is the solar production throughout the day from sunrise, 7 a.m., all the way to sunset, 8 p.m. The blue curve represents the power produced by the solar panel, so that's the DC power. And the orange curve represents the AC power, which is the DC power that is converted to AC power by the inverter. And what we assume in this chart is that all the DC power produced by the panels is converted into AC power. You may perhaps notice a slight difference between the DC power in blue and the AC power in orange. In fact, the AC power is a little bit less. And the reason is because every time we convert from DC to AC, or for that matter, from AC to DC, we experience what is called like a conversion loss. Now, let's assume that we want to increase the size of our solar panel array from 10.2 kilowatt peak to 15.2 kilowatt peak. If we first consider the DC optimizer configuration, we would have two options available. Option one, replace the existing panels and DC optimizers with more powerful ones. This would not be very cost effective. Or option two, add 12 identical panels for a total of 36 panels, along with the corresponding 12 DC optimizers. We assume in this case that each panel is 425 watts. In either case, we would not be changing the solar inverter capacity of our system, which would remain at 10 kilowatt. In the case of a micro inverter configuration, we would have three options before us to increase the size of our solar panel array. Option number one would be to replace the existing panels and micro inverters with more powerful ones, not very cost effective. Option number two would be to add 12 identical panels for a total of 36 panels along with the corresponding 12 micro-inverters. In both options, we would be changing the total solar inverter capacity of our system from 10 kilowatt to 15.3 kilowatt. But to do so, we would need to first upgrade our net metering agreement with the utility company. This is a significant disadvantage, both in terms of extra fees and extra time. And we do not even know if this will be accepted by the utility company in the end. Option three would be to replace the existing panels with more powerful ones while keeping the same power rated micro inverters. Not super cost effective either. We would not be changing in option three the total inverter capacity that would remain at 10 kilowatt. Now let's analyze the impact on our solar production 
in the case of the DC optimizer configuration. Like we had before, sunrise is at 7 a.m. and sunset at 8 p.m. But unlike what we had previously, the DC power reaches a maximum of precisely 15.3 kilowatt around 1, 1.30 p.m. And the AC power is clipped once we hit the maximum inverter rating, which is 10 kilowatt. And so this presents an advantage because all this extra DC power that suddenly we have available could be used, for example, to charge our DC coupled battery, if we have one or more than one. This extra DC power could also be sent to uh, heat up the water in our hot water tank, for example. Extra DC power could also be used to charge our electric vehicle, if we have one. And finally, our extra DC power could be used to run our pull prep, for example, or any other DC device. In the case of a micro-inverter configuration, then we would not have any extra DC power available simply because each micro-inverter would actually clip this DC power at their maximum rating capacity. All the previous application that we talked about, charging the battery, this would be AC coupled battery in this case, charging or heating up the water in the hot water tank, charging an electric vehicle, all of those applications would use AC power, hence leaving less power for the home or, and less power to export to the grid. As we saw, there are clear benefits of oversizing a solar array in a DC optimizer configuration. And so, if you choose to have DC optimizers on your roof, I would probably recommend adding as many panels as you can. In the end, my experience is that we always need more power than what we think we'll need. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I hope you found this video useful. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.